Hey guys, it's Cooper Codes. Today we're going to be taking a look at the problem pairs of songs with total durations divisible by 60. This is a great introductory medium as it applies just a little bit more functionality on top of your regular easy problems, especially for hash map problems. Let's get into solving it. Let's get into an example and see how we can approach this problem. So I made a very simple array with the values 30, 90, and 150. Each of these values represents the duration of a said song, right? Let's think about what it means to be a pair, right? A pair means this. Value 1 plus value 2 divisible by 60 or mod 60 is equal to 0, right? And so let's take a look at two values from our array that would satisfy that, right? Let's say 30 and 90 to start off, right? 30 plus 90 is going to give us 120 and then if you do 120 mod 60 you're going to get zero so that means those two are a pair of songs that are divisible by 60 right fair enough let's think about another way to look at how we could have found the same answer right if we look at 30 and say 30 mod 60 we're going to see that it has a remainder of 30 that pretty much means we need 30 more to get to that mod 60 equals zero, right? Because if you did 30 plus 30, you were gonna get 60, 60 mod 60 is gonna give you zero, right? And so we can take a look at the 90 and see 90 mod 60, right, is also equal to 30. You might be a little bit confused there, right? But pretty much, we're not worried that 90 is a greater number, we're worried that 90 has a remainder of 30, right? Pretty much a remainder that where they both add up to the 60, which we want, right? You'll see, you can do 30 plus 30 if you just add the remainders, right? It becomes 60, and then 60 mod 60 is going to be equal to zero. And so this is one of the ways we can approach the problem, right? The concept of remainders here is super important. You'll see, if we're at the 150, right? And we do mod 60, it's going to give us 30 again, right? But since, let's just say we have a pointer at 150, right? We have two numbers behind us we could consider, but we don't worry about what the actual numbers are. We just know that we've seen two numbers previously that have a remainder of 30, right? Because we're pretty much saying we're at 30, what do we need to add to 30 to get to 60? It's 30, right? And so we can use a certain data structure to look back and see how many 30 remainder numbers we've seen before, right? This is one of the main concepts of the problem. And we can store the things we've seen before in a hash map, right? You can imagine, this is what the hash map is going to do. We're gonna be at 30, let's say our pointer goes back to our very first element, right? 30, and we're gonna have a hash map, right? I'll just call it uh, map in the top right here map is equal to a dictionary, right? And so when we see the 30, we're gonna do 30 mod 60 right here, and it's gonna give us 30, right? And so that means we can go to our map and say, okay, value of 30 is now equal to one, because it's the first time we've seen a 30, right? When our pointer goes to the 90, it's going to do the same calculation, 90 mod 60 is 30, right? And so we can say we already have a 30 remainder in the map, right? So we're gonna to add to it, and now it's gonna become two. Because it's important, our map saves the remainders, not the numbers. That's an important concept, right? So let's just say hypothetically, we're at the 150, right? We can say 150 mod 60 equals 30, right? Then we can say, all right, let's go into our hash map and see this value 30 where I just put a square around it. Let's go in and see how many times that's happened in our map, right? And we, we also do this at the 92, but I skipped over that, right? But at the 150, this is what the step's going on, right? Is we're saying, okay, we're at 30, that means we have to add 30 to get to 60, right? So we're like, okay, we've seen 30 twice, right? And so we add two to our total pairs because the two pairs would be uh, 30 plus 150 and 90 plus 150 would be our two pairs there, right? This kind of shows how we can use a hash map for our problem. All right, guys, let's run through the test case on leak code, which I've drawn out here and apply the same hash map logic I discussed earlier. So at the first 30, let's take a look at 30 mod 60, just like before, right? 
gives us a remainder of 30. So to get to 60, we need to add 30 to that, right? We have no 30s in our map currently. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, 30 is equal to one, right? Now we're going to move our pointer over to 20, right? So we're going to say 20 mod 60 is equal to 20, right? So we need a 40 to get to there, right? We don't have any 40s in our hash map currently. And so we're going to say 20 is equal to one, right? Now we're at 150. So 150 mod 60 is going to give us 30, right? We need a 30 to get to 60, right? And so we actually do have a 30 in our map, right? And so we can say pairs, the amount of pairs we've seen is now equal to one, right? And so we can say, all right, we have another 30. An important concept here is we have to add to even the, even if we use our 30 and we use the remainder and the value, right? We still need to add to the hash map after, right? So we do plus one. And so now that is going to become 30 is going to have a value of two, right? And so now we are going to move forward to the 100 here. And so let's take a look at this 100 mod 60 is going to give us 40, right? With 40, we need 20 to get up to 60, right? Good thing for us, we have a 20 in use, right? And so we can use that 20 and add another one to pairs. So pairs is now equal to two, right? Because what we did is we took a look at this 40 and this 20, and that's how we found the values that would add up to 60. We don't care about the specific values, we care about their remainders, right? And the count of them is another thing that's super important. So let's go back. Now we are going to take a look at the 40 here, right? Oh, totally missed this part. What you got to do here is since we had this 40, we have to now say 40 is equal to a value of one since it wasn't previously in our hash map, right? All right, now let's move to the next value. 40 mod 60 is equal to 20, right? You'll see we now have a 40 in our hash map to add to that, right? And so we can go in and say, all right, we have a 20 here. It needs a 40 to get up to 60. So we can use a 20 in our hash map and add one to our pairs, right? So now add one to the pairs is gonna be a total of three, right? And just, you know, to be, uh, just to stay current with how we're updating our values, we are going to take this 20 and add one to it. Because as you can see, we have a 20 here, right? And you'll see, let's just go through and make sure we did all our calculations correctly. We have two 30s in this list over here, right? Which we account for right here with the two 30s, right? Or two remainder 30s, I mean. And so now we have a 20 here, right here, a two 20s. So we have a 20, we have a 20 with a value of two, right? And 140, so just a 40 there, right? And with this process, we were able to get to the expected result from the lead code example. All right, let's get into actually coding this. All right, guys, let's get into coding the actual solution, right? First things first, let's take a look at what we said so far and the variables we're going to need to start out, right? One variable we kept on using was map, right? A simple hash map for us to save the previous mod values, right? Then we also used a pairs to keep track of the amount of pairs, just a simple integer, right? Uh, in our example, we had a very simple loop that just went through all the numbers. Uh, since we didn't really care about the indexes of where the numbers were, we can just say for num in time, right? I'm honestly confused why Leeco didn't call it times, but I guess, you know, that's Leeco's choice, right? <laughs> all right, so let's take a look here, right? First things first, we're gonna wanna get that mod 60 value, right? And so let's call it mod num, the number we got when we mod 60 to our current number, right? So then we do num mod 60, right? First things first, uh, one thing to think about is if num is zero, right? That's actually an edge case when you're using the modulus, so you have to be careful there, right? Because 60 mod 60, right, is gonna be equal to zero, right? But if you do 60 minus, you know, zero, it's gonna give us 60, but that would never show up in our hash map. Only zeros would ever show up on our hash map, right? So we have to have a specific use case just for that. So let's code that out, right? If, oh, and I've coded out our 60 on accident here, or commented it out. 
let's take a look here. So if mod num is equal to zero, right? We're pretty much gonna say um, if zero is in the hash, right? Total pairs plus equals the amount of values we've seen there, right? So it'd be hash of zero. You'll see, we have to do this edge case because the other, the other way we find, you know, like let's say we have the remainder 20 and we need 40, right? How we find that 40 is we do 60 minus 20. Does that kind of make sense? I didn't go over that in our diagram, but that's kind of something I was hoping uh, we could get to there slowly, right? And so that's how we get to the other values, right? If we say take 60 minus the mod num, right? This is gonna give us the value we need to get up to 60, right? If we are at 20, we need 40 to get up to 60, right? So 60 minus 20 is gonna give us 40, right? And so if this value is in our hash, that means we have seen a 40 before, a remainder 40, right? So we have 60 minus mod num is in the hash, right? Now we're gonna to add to our total pairs, right? Whatever we saw before. So if we take a look at what this actually means when we say hash of 60 minus mod num, right? What we're doing is this. We're taking a look at the 30, for example. Let's say we went to 150 and we'd seen two 30s before, right? We're taking a value of 60 minus 30, which is gonna give us 30, right? And so we're doing map of 30, right? And I just realized I've been calling our map hash, so let's just switch it to hash, make it easier for ourselves, right? But that's how we're getting that value from the 60 minus mod num, right? And that's all we need so far. Now the most important thing is no matter what happens in this if else statement right here, right? All right, we can make this, yeah, if else if statement here, right? We still need to add numbers to our hash, right? So if mod num is in the hash, right? We're gonna say hash of mod num uh, plus equals one. This is the same exact thing we were doing on paper. Pretty much if it's not in our hash map, we set it equal to one. If it's in our hash map, we can add one to it. Very simple. Um, if you're unfamiliar with hash maps, I'd recommend you take a look at some of the easier problems, but this problem is simple enough once you understand the logic, right? And so now that's gonna be it. We have our counter to make sure that we're saving those mod num values for the you know next values we see in our array. So we have the counter in our hash map, and we also have the code that gets the numbers from the hash map and make sure we add the correct amount to our total pairs. So if we return total pairs here, right, we should be on the right track. Oh, total pairs reference before assignment. Oh, I said pairs above. I meant to say total pairs. There we go. All right, accepted there. And accepted here, 81%. So if you guys have any questions as to how I got to this solution, I would definitely recommend using the debugger or going back through the test cases I tried out. This problem definitely tests if how well you understand the modulus operator. So definitely go through some examples on your own to understand that further. All right guys, thanks so much for watching.